In this crash course lesson, we'll get an introduction to Bootstrap by laying out some of the key elements that make up a Bootstrap website, and we're also going to make a Bootstrap website. So let's start from the top with our navigation bar up here, where we have our navigation links, followed by the image slider beneath that. Then we have the 12 column Bootstrap section here, so we'll learn how all of the Bootstrap columns work. Then we have what's called a Jumbotron here with a Bootstrap button. Then a large heading here, followed by some titles, images, and text underneath. And then at the bottom we have what's called cards, where you can feature an image, a heading, paragraph, and button. So if we head back up to the top of the website here and size it down, we're going to find that a number of different columns are going to change their widths. So in particular, let's take a look at this 12 column layout here because we're gonna learn that Bootstrap is made up of 12 columns throughout this tutorial and how to change all the columns so you can have a number of different website layouts with the different widths. So once we get down to under 576 pixels here, we'll be at the mobile version with a single column width and we have the drop down navigation and then if we size it back up, it's gonna go from one column to two to three to six and then all the way up will be to 12 columns for that section underneath our image slider. Let's take a second to size it down in a different section before we look at the mobile version to the right. So let's check out this um, display for heading there and then the three column section underneath. So once we get down to about 768 pixels, that uh, three column section as well as the two column section with the cards underneath are gonna turn into a one column width. And we'll learn about all the different screen sizes that Bootstrap works with in just a few minutes. And before we get started, let's do a quick scroll through of the mobile version here for how you can expect the single column layout to appear on a mobile phone. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside and show you what we'll need to get started. So in the description of this video will be a free download for the Bootstrap Introduction Starter file here, which is index.html. So I'm going to be using the free program called Sublime Text, which you can get from sublimetext.com. And then I'm also going to have it open in Google Chrome as we're building the Bootstrap layout. Also in the video description, I'm going to have a link to Bootstrap's web website where they have a list of all the different website components that you can use here on the left hand side and as I said all of the components that you can use to build your very own website and we'll be referencing some of them as we use them throughout the tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm connected to Google Chrome here in index.html by typing something into the body section and as you can see here I am connected and let's get started from the top of our document here. Okay, so from the top we have our doc type HTML, then HTML language English, followed by our character set UTF-8, which is standard, and then with device width initial scale one for mobile devices, followed by the title of our website. Then we have a link to Bootstrap's uh, latest version of Bootstrap CSS, then the latest version of jQuery, which you need to run Bootstrap, then we have Popper JS, which is recommended for Bootstrap, as well as the latest version of Bootstrap uh, JS here being Bootstrap uh, version four. So beneath that, we have a section for internal styles here, where we have a little bit of uh, padding added to the Bootstrap columns. So that's gonna add some padding right here in between the columns, as you can see, all throughout the website. And also included in this style section are all of the different breakpoints for Bootstrap, which we'll be going over thoroughly throughout the crash course lesson. So let's move down to the body section of the website and we'll get started with the first section, which is the navigation as you can see up here on top. Okay, so let's go and let's start off with a invisible comment in our HTML saying that this is the start of our bootstrap navigation. So I'm just gonna write bootstrap navigation here. 
and then we'll close out the comment and then we'll start our navigation off with the HTML5 tag nav and then we'll give it a class here and we'll call it navbar and then class navbar dash expand dash MD so basically what that means is that once we get up to the medium screen width which is 768 pixels it's going to expand from the mobile version to the full width version so MD as you can see up in the CSS is 768 and then we'll say navbar dash dark and BG dash dark which is the standard uh, dark colored bootstrap navigation as opposed to the light version okay so let's drop down underneath our navcast class and we'll create a container here so we're gonna call this container fluid so in bootstrap you wanna wrap your elements with a container and container fluid is gonna make it um, use up the full width of the browser as opposed to a fixed width now we'll go ahead and add our logo where it says bootstrap so we're just gonna use text rather than a logo image so we're gonna wrap this with an a tag for our link we'll say a class navbar dash brand for the logo section and then href and I'm just gonna leave the link blank right now with a hashtag and then in between the a tag we'll just write bootstrap so now if we come over to the version that will be uh, working on here throughout the tutorial we have our navbar started with the dark background up here as well as the bootstrap text off to the left so let's go ahead and start our drop down button next that we see here for the mobile version underneath 768 pixels so we're gonna put this inside of a button and we'll give it a class called navbar dash toggler for our toggle button and then we'll say type button and data dash toggle collapse because our navbar is opening and uh, collapsing and then we'll say data target hashtag navbar responsive with a capital R and we'll reference this uh, ID in just a moment with our drop down navigation okay so now if we refresh we have the start of our drop down button here but we aren't seeing the icon in there so let's go ahead and create a span class inside of the button tag here and we're just gonna call this navbar dash toggler dash icon okay and that's gonna lay out the icon that we have there so in bootstrap 4 here the latest version of bootstrap we can just do that with one span class previously we had to add uh, three different tags one for each line there with the three barred button now let's start our uh, collapsible navbar div class so we'll say collapse navbar dash collapse and then let's use the div ID that we referenced above inside of the button which is what will be opening or collapsing which is navbar responsive with a capital R and then we can close out our div and inside of this we'll have our unordered list for our uh, navigation list items here which we have for each link so we'll say ul class navbar dash nav and then ml dash auto so ML auto is going to push our navigation items off to the right and we'll mess around with that in just a moment once we have our list items added so our first one will say nav item active which you always want to do for the first navigation item with bootstrap and then we'll say a class nav dash link and then I'm just going to leave the link blank here and then the first one is home and then we'll close out the a tag so now now if we come over and refresh there we have our first navigation item here and it's displaying all the way off to the right with the uh, ML auto class for our unordered list so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this list item and we'll take away the active class here and I'll change it to link 
2. And then just to speed it up, I'll add this two more times and change it to link 3 and link 4. Okay, so now if we come over and refresh, there we have all four of our links and we have a little uh, inherent uh, hover effect with Bootstrap. So let's mess around with it. Let me just show you um, the different sizes here we can use. So we don't have to go with MD. We can go with uh, SM for small. So once we get down to 576 pixels, it'll turn into the mobile version and it will expand past that. And we could change this to light, for example, and use the default light bootstrap navigation, which you can always change the colors of uh, in CSS later, but we're not going to cover that in this video. So I'm going to change this back to dark. And then the other thing that I want to show you is the option to change where the navigation list items will display. So here we have MX Auto, which is going to have it display in the center. And you can also use MD Auto. Okay, so that's going to have it display off to the left. So if you, for example, have a search bar off to the right or social media icons, you might want your navigation unordered list in the center or off to the left here. But for now, let's just keep it all the way off to the right with ML Auto. So that does it for our navigation for now. Let's move over to the image slider beneath that that we're seeing with the placeholder images. So I'm going to create another HTML invisible comment here just to say that the image slider is starting to separate it from our navigation. And let's start it off with a div ID. So we can name this whatever we want. We're just going to call it div ID slides and we'll give it a class called carousel slide and then we'll say data dash ride carousel. Okay, and then we can drop down and close out our div. And inside of that, we'll have another div, this time a div class rather than an ID called carousel dash inner. And inside of there, we'll have our actual carousel items, similar to the navigation items. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the first one here. And we're just going to call this div class carousel dash item. And similar to our navigation, we'll have the first one as an active class. And inside of this div class, we'll have our image. So all of the images that we're using throughout this tutorial will be from uh, placeholder.com. It's a pretty cool feature where you can just put in the dimensions that you want here. So 1300 by 600. And any dimensions you want will display um, an image of that size here. And then we'll say class image fluid. So the image stays at 100% of the screen uh, once we flex down past its width. Okay, so there we have the first image. And now to give it the slide effect, obviously we'll need more than one image. So I'm just going to paste this again and take away the active class there. And now if we refresh and wait just a moment, we'll see that it's sliding over to the next placeholder image that we have here. Okay, so now let's move down and let's move, learn a thing or two about the Bootstrap grid, which is really important to understand when you're creating Bootstrap websites. So we'll learn the full effect of the columns as we move along, but basically there are 12 columns and we have a number of different breakpoints where we can apply uh, different widths to the columns. So we have the extra large, large, medium, small, and extra small widths where we can change uh, how many columns we want a section of our website to have. So let's go ahead and we'll just call this section Bootstrap 12 Column Grid. And then I'm going to close out the comment. And similar to our navigation up here, we're going to wrap this with a div class container dash fluid. So it takes up the full browser window rather than a fixed width. And then we'll say div class row. 
which is important to add uh, in Bootstrap because you want your columns inside of a row. And for the first one, we're going to go ahead and start off with the extra small width. So let's go back down to the 12 column grid section here and we'll start this off with col for column dash xs for anything under 576 pixels and then 12. So basically when we're using all 12 columns it's going to take up all 12 and be a single column uh, website or section. So then we'll just place the image in here and I'm going to go ahead and change this to uh, 500 by 500. So now if we refresh there we have the uh, 500 by 500 image and just to reflect that it takes up 100 percent I'll change it to 1500 by 500 so as you can see here whenever we use the 12 figure to take up all 12 columns it'll take up the full page or full screen so let's move on to the uh, small width with call SM which is the uh, 576 pixel mark so basically we're saying anything over 576 pixels this is how we want it to display and if we put 6 that's half of 12 so naturally we'll have two columns inside of the 12 column layout so if we refresh there we have the 1500 by 500 image only taking up half of the screen and once we flex down underneath 576 pixels it'll turn into a single column website where it says call xs12 so let's move on to the medium screen width which is 768 pixels so we'll say call dash md and we'll use up four columns for this giving us um, a three column section there since uh, 4 goes into 12 three times. So we'll go from three columns to two to one. Okay so now we're seeing the um, one-third section there at 768. So let's move on to large screens at 992 pixels and we'll reference that with col-lg and we'll use up uh, three columns and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so that'll go into 12 four times. So that is a one fourth column once we get to 992 pixels, or we have the screen size at anywhere above that. Okay, so let's go back over to our text editor here with Sublime Text, and let's reference the extra large screens next, which is XL. So XL is uh, 1,200 pixels and above, and we'll just use one out of the 12 columns for our extra large width here. Okay, so if we refresh, here we go from a single column to two columns to three columns to four columns. And then once we get all the way up to 1,200 pixels, we have a a single column out of 12 there displaying on the left. Okay, so if we take a look at the finished version, this is actually going to be two for our large screens. And then um, we have all 12 used up. So what I'm going to do is let's paste this a couple times. So I'll just paste it until we get to six different columns and let's take a look at it now okay so on the 992 large screens we're seeing it take up 100 percent but then on 1200 we're seeing it take up half of the screen here okay so we go from one to two to three to six and then to 12 so we can go ahead and just paste this to keep it uh, similar to the original six more times so we have all 12 columns it looks like I'm missing one here okay so there we go with our 12 column layout and please do uh, mess around with the different column widths all you really have to do is 
add up to 12 with your different columns and be creative at the different breakpoints when the screen resizes to reflect uh, how you want it to display on a desktop width, um, a tablet, and a smartphone. So let's move down to the next section which is the jumbotron right here with where we have some uh, text displayed off to the left and a button to the right. So in the link in the description you can always go to the jumbotron section of the bootstrap components to check it out for yourself and make it um, a little more detailed. We'll go ahead and just do a simple version here. So I'll drop down and say uh, jumbotron in our HTML comment and we'll wrap this with a container fluid and then we'll also give it a div class row and go ahead and close out your divs there and then inside of that we'll have the first column section here so this is going to take up nine out of our twelve columns and then the button will take up three out of our twelve columns so we're going to say col-md-9 because we want it to be one um, column underneath 768 pixels with md as you can see right here. So once we get up to 768 pixels this section will take up a 9 twelfths underneath that it will be at the full width one full column. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, uh, this paragraph text here to save us a little time. And we're going to give this a class called lead, which in Bootstrap makes it a, light, um, a lightweight text that's a little bit larger than regular paragraph text. Okay, so as we flex down, right here it's taking up 100%, and then once we get up to 768, it's taking up 9 twelfths. So then all we need to do is give our row a class of Jumbotron, and if we refresh, there we have the Jumbotron section. So now let's move on and let's go ahead and add our button underneath this div class. So we'll say div class call-md3, and then inside of that we'll start our button with a link tag, so ahref, and I'm just going to leave this link blank and then inside of our link we'll have our button so we'll use the button HTML5 tag and we'll give this a type uh, you can write whatever text inside of it you want so we'll say button type button and then we'll give it the class btn btn dash outline dash secondary okay and let's go ahead and check it out there are and then we'll use a btn-lg to create a large button. So with bootstrap buttons there are a bunch of different styles already laid out for you. So for example primary will turn it blue and then you have um, different ones like success with green, danger, warning. So all you need to do is change the success text to warning for example to have it red for now we'll just use this outline secondary uh, button class here to match the original okay so let's move down to the next section where it says display for heading so we'll make we'll call this section a uh, title with three columns and then we can close out our comment there and inside of that we'll say div class container fluid and then div class row okay and our first row as you can see here for the display for heading is going to take up 100% of the screen no matter how wide or narrow it is so we'll say div class call-12. We don't need to use XS or XL, we can just do call-12 to take up all 12 columns and then we'll use a, a, a bootstrap class called display-4. So you have a display1 to display4 
to reflect different heading sizes, which makes it a little uh, the the uh, heading text a little bit lightweight and a little larger than regular heading text. So if we just as change this to display one, there you have it, much larger than a normal H1 would be in HTML or heading one. Okay. So let's drop down and let's add our next column here, which will be a one-third column. So we'll say div class col dash md dash four because um, four goes into twelve three times to make up three columns. And then let's change this or let's add a heading. So we'll say h3 my title, and then underneath that we'll have our image. So image source, and we'll use the same um, placeholder resource here as well as the class image fluid to make the image responsive when we um, are on a, a smaller screen size. And then I'll just add the paragraph text here without using the lead class, just regular paragraph text. Okay, so now if we go to the version we've been working on and refresh, there we have them pushed off to the left. So in the original, um, we can see the difference now with the, um, the lead class here. In the original, we have text centered. So all we need to do is add this div class called text-center and Bootstrap will take care of our centered text there. So to save us a little time, I'm just going to go ahead and paste this twice. And now if we refresh, there we have all of our title images and paragraph text laid out with the uh, three column layout here. So now let's move down to the last section which are called bootstrap cards. So here we have cards in the original uh, or bootstrap documentation here. So you can mess around with cards and have it display a number of different ways. We'll just do the basic one, which has um, a title text and then a button underneath, or image title text button. So again, we'll wrap this with the div class container fluid and then div class row. And then we can drop down and close out our divs. Okay, so we'll say div class call md-6 because it's taking up one half of the screen and we want it to change to a single column at the 768 pixel mark with md for medium. And then we'll say div class card and inside of our card we'll have a different class for each section. So let's add our image first here. So we'll say img and we'll give this a class and we're going to call it card image top because our image is displaying at the top of the card and then for our source for our image let's use our placeholder resource here and let's drop down underneath our image and we'll create our card body section here which contains our uh, title text and button so we'll say div class card dash body and then drop down and close out the div and inside of that let's add our title so we'll say h4 class card dash title and using the same name we'll add John Smith and then close out our h4 okay then underneath that we'll add our card text where it says John Smith is learning bootstrap and then it should say liking and subscribing which I would appreciate if you did and then let's drop down underneath our paragraph here and we'll add our button so we'll use an a tag and we'll uh, just leave the link blank here with the hashtag and then we'll give it a class the same as the button above so btn btn dash outline dash secondary and I'm not going to add a button large with this one. We'll just leave it at the default size. 
Okay, so now if we come over and refresh, there we have our card section, except for the paragraph isn't displaying. So I'll just add a break here so we can see the bottom of it with the, uh, the border that's given to the card section. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, change the opening and closing of this paragraph tag here. So I forgot to add card-text and then close out the P tag. And now if we refresh, there we have our paragraph text. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and paste it once over. So we have both cards at uh, half the screen width over 768 pixels. And anything beneath that is going to take up the full width of the screen, as you can see here. OK, so we have our navigation, our image slider, a number of different uh, column widths with our sections beneath that and we'll take a quick look at the mobile version right here okay so that does it i want to thank you for sticking around with me through this tutorial please remember to like this video subscribe and turn on your notifications and i'm also going to link a playlist to bootstrap in at the end of the video so be sure to check that out thanks for watching